Hey, this is Al from Tilton Terrages Pastors. We're inside on a project. We've been doing some remodeling, new cabinetry, uh, new flooring, and we need to replace the wood stove on our homestead. So um, the original hearth that was down here was uh, just tile right on the subfloor and all the tile had cracked out and there was a lot of issues with it. The wood stove that we had was not very, didn't meet our needs very well. It, it, um, it burnt really slow and created a lot of creosote in our, in our chimney. Now I know creosote, we did burn very good wood. It's just the way that that stove burnt, it created a lot of creosote. It was a, it was a, a cook stove and it just didn't operate all that well. Um, so we have a new stove that's going to be going in. And so now we're going to be creating a new hearth. The objective for creating the hearth is going to be uh, to uh, get 720 pounds of deflection. We're going to put marble tile on here. Um, so I'm going to go through and show you how we're going to create the foundation for the hearth. We're going to sheath that hearth. We're going to coat that hearth with some concrete board. And then we're gonna mud and granite tile onto the, onto the hearth. And then we're gonna set a stove, put some piping in and fire it up. So stay tuned, maybe a long one. I got my wonderful helper here, Miss Boogie. She's our farm dog, our little farm pug. Oh, she's such a good helper. Okay, so, all right, book. okay. So I've angled the corners here um, just to give us. So I've angled the corners here just to give us a little bit more clearance around, but so that we have enough uh, room on the hearth for um, my wife's decorations and, and any extra wood that we might want to put on the hearth. So we're using two by fours that'll get us just up enough all off the floor give us a good clearance um, and we want to create an extremely rigid surface that way our tile doesn't have any flex if we have any flex in the tile that's what caused tile to crack so we're putting a granite tile on here it wasn't terribly expensive but the money that we do spend we don't want to have to spend more money to replace tile or do more work in the future we want a solid secure surface that the stove will be sitting on the center so you can see where we have really beefed it up in the center we want no flex at all to this structure so we'll be putting a, a three quarter inch plywood on the top and we'll move right along and i'll show you what we're doing
we received all of our vinyl plank floor. We installed that in the remainder of the kitchen and the, and the dining room. And we're still going to carry on throughout the living room. The granite tile came in. We went through and inspected each piece and, and uh, laid out each piece to make sure that the, the coloring was good. Now we have to make some cuts. We've already made a few small cuts so that we could check spacing and measurements. So these are going to go around the skirt of the hearth. And we'll lay all that out. We've decided to go with a quarter inch spacing between each and that works out to a good width. Uh, and it covers both of our side tiles, you know, the, the skirt tiles. It covers that. That's going to look really good. We've got our spacing. We have to make a couple of our angle cuts in the front. I think the, the biggest key, the biggest trick that I've learned over the years is to make sure you take your time lay everything out. It's a small project. It's not a huge project. So laying things out, it might take a few more minutes. It might take an extra half of a day, but if you lay it out, you're going to see granite is a, a natural occurring stone. So there's always going to be deviations and, and changes in it. Um, and you just want to make sure that all those deviations in each tile are going to make a good appealing look. So we've spread those out. We have them checked out. You can see it's all kind of uneven, but as we go through and do the masonry, we're gonna fix all that. We have good spacing coming this way. We'll make our cuts coming across the back and uh, follow along as we continue on the hearth project. Pretty soon we'll be installing that new wood stove and getting it fired up. As you can see, we got all the outside tiles all cut, laid out. Everything's ready to go. We've already laid out the, the ones on the, on the top. We've made some cuts. Uh, we're going to do these cuts around the back after we have the apron on. And then we get started so that our cuts around the, the chimney itself are more precise. We've got some mud mixed up. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to start mudding up these tile on the apron and getting them all set. Okay, I got three rows done. I had to go out and mix another batch of mud. And so I'm gonna continue on. I got rows four or five and the little row six in the back to do. And then we'll be able to grout. Or possibly we'll let it set up and dry for about 12 hours and then we'll grout. Then we'll let that sit for 24 to 48 hours and then we'll be able to set the stove on top of it. I'm, I'm using a, a technique and I, and I didn't really go into detail of what mud or what techniques I'm using or tools or anything like that. Um, I am using the, uh, this is called the buttering technique. Um, so you can lay your tiles out however, however you're comfortable laying them out. For me, 
I'd like to get a real visual and because it's such a small project, be able to lay each and every tile out and get a feel for where they're going to go and, and how they're going to lay and what my spacing is going to be. Because it's, it's masonry work, it's stonework, so it's not, it's not perfect exact. Um, you know, and there's some wiggling around you have to do and pressure you have to apply and things like that. So I really like to get as much of a hands-on feel as I can get. And you can see I buttered that up. I got all my edges clean. set that tile. I'll try and work as clean as I possibly can. Make sure that there's not too much mortar that has come out from underneath of the tile that's going to prevent my grout from penetrating that joint. Okay, I'm going to continue on setting the rest of these tiles. All our tiles been set. We let it cure for 24 hours. Now we're ready to grout. Normally during grouting, I would use a, uh, a sponge float or a, I should say normally during grouting, I would use a rubber float. Today, I'm not gonna be using a rubber float. I'm gonna be using a little bit different of a method because I'm using an epoxy grout it's a newer type grout that'll allow me to grout once and then never have to seal it again. It's the first time I'm ever using it. I know quite a few people that have used it and there were problems applying it in the traditional method using the rubber float. And that was that once it starts to haze and dry, it's very difficult to clean and you had to go back and re-wet it and, and it just made a mess. So what I'm going to be doing today is I, I got some disposable trowels. And so I'm going to use those plastic trowels. I'm going to force the grout into the joints and stay very tight and very close to the joint. I'll use the larger trowel to skim across and, and clean the tile as I go. It work in very small areas. Um, I have a nice sponge and some cold water for cleanup. I'll use a, uh, uh, a towel to really go over and, and uh, get everything really clean. And my goal is to just work neat, clean, and keep as much of the grout off of the, the tile as I can. It took us several days to get it cleaned up and then repolish the, the granite tile. The epoxy grout was extremely hard to work with. We did get through it. It took several days to dry. We had to polish it using a buffer and now we're ready to set the stove. So I have the boys here today and they're gonna help me put the stove in. We're gonna get the stove pipe cut, everything installed and ready to go.
So we hope you enjoyed our video. Here's our finished and installed wood stove. We built a marble hearth, installed wood stove. And now we're just starting our first few fires. We're gonna do a few small fires, temper the, the fire brick on the inside and set the paint. So we'll be doing a review on another video on, on the stove. So far, we're pleased with it. And uh, we'll let you know how it goes. So thanks for watching. If you could hit that like and subscribe, we really appreciate it.